of my scale videos I've just made, somebody said, how do I write a song? What does it all mean, verse, bridge, chorus? What does all that mean? And I thought, oh, the $64,000 question. And okay, I'm gonna try and explain how it works. Now, generally speaking in a song, you'll start with an intro. Then there'll be a verse. maybe verse 2 which would generally speaking be the same as verse 1 then you get another chorus which contains your hook line then it might go to the middle 8 not modulate to another key. I've kind of used another chord there and I'm going to explain the, the chords and all that as well. And then your middle eight would then give rise to maybe another chorus or maybe even another verse. And then at the end, usually you'd really hammer the hell out of the chorus by having a double. Such, or it might end up on a uh, sort of a definite ending. So, what was I doing there? Well, on guitar here, I based it on the key of G. So there's my G chord, which is chord one. Then I had C, which is chord four. D, which is chord five. And an E minor, which is chord six. So G, C, D, and E minor. Then in the middle eight, I used a chord of the flat and seventh, I went to F. Of course, I'm making this up on the spot, so I haven't really... Uh, I, can, I can remember what the chorus is. Now, one of the reasons I am making it up on the spot is because you discover things more organically. You're not thinking in music theory terms. You're just going, oh, what about... What about oh, yeah, that works, that's fine, you know, that's fine. And, uh, and of course, it dis it's all depends on the subject matter as well. I mean, at the moment, I'm sort of playing in a major key, so it implies a sort of, you know, positive subject, perhaps. I'm not going to talk about the death of a loved one with that. Oh, yes, you know, it'd be a bit weird. So it's going to be about cheerful stuff. Now, of course... Reflective song, perhaps for a subject matter like the death of a loved one. Etc. Etc. Now, the intro that I played there, I just made up. I think I. Now an intro is a good way of just introducing the song, introducing the tempo, so you basically, you're latching on to the beat before you have to concentrate on what the top line is. If it comes in straight away, it's a bit sort of in your face. So, doing something that's quite quiet at the beginning, there's also these volume levels, so maybe verse one, you keep pretty sparse. The chorus would lift a bit, because the chorus has to be your hook line. <laughs> has to be the thing that people go in the street, more so perhaps than the verse. So, 
generally speaking, your chorus would be a bit louder. And then you might come down after your first chorus to... to a little bit of a quiet bit, like an interlude, and then into another verse. Now, between the verse and the chorus, you can also have a bridge section, which essentially well, it does what it says on the tin. It bridges the verse subject matter with your chorus, and you might have a build-up of instruments going through your bridge into your chorus. So your verse may go... So, you might have a bridge section in your first verse to your first chorus, but you might decide to omit the bridge on the second go, so it just goes verse two straight into a chorus, because the bridge section is kind of preparing the listener for that chorus. But the second time the chorus comes around, you don't need to prepare them, because it's basically going to be the same. After the chorus, however, the midsection is a good way of just of filling in. I know it sounds like a... You know, it's not meant to be a stocking filler. It's not meant to pad out your tune to be 3 minutes 20 or whatever it is. But it can give you um, a, a sort of, you know, you could have somebody play an instrumental solo over it, or it could be backing vocals just going, ah, and then to come back to another verse. Now, very often a midsection, or like a middle eight as it's traditionally known, meaning eight bars in length, but it can be any length you like, the middle eight would then lead back um, sometimes to a chorus at the end. And usually you'd have a double chorus, so you'd just really hammer that point through, as I've just said. So your song really, it, it's so, so up to you what you write about, of course, and the chords that you use. But there will be chord sequences and chord things that won't work. That's not going to be memorable for the right reasons. It's just a random collection of nonsense. Although I tried to harmonise my vocals as I was kind of working out what I was going to play. So it always has to be, when you're writing a song that is, you know, a pop song, it has to be predictable. But you have to then work out how you're going to make things different. I mean, you know, we've got this chord sequence, you know. You know, chord one, chord five, chord six, and chord four. You know, it's used an awful lot. But it could be... change the genre, you can have that reggae or, you know, a swing. Yeah. You can have different extensions, I mean, that would, you know, that would be a sort of more gentle song. things too complicated. Songs are great when they're simple. The best songs are those, you know, two chords or three chords, you know, Love Me Do, the Beatles. What a great tune. It's two chords. And it only goes to another chord for the midsection. It's genius writing because does what it says on the tin. It doesn't purport to be anything flashy. It's it's a song. It's communication. It's a story that's being shared. And we've also got to remember that, that it has to be as simple as you can make it without going off on one. Of course, you can make things like the harmony. You can make it com complicated. You can have other parts that are just layering up. Um, but, you know, making it memorable is, is easier said than done, of course. I mean, you know... I, live in a modest house in the south of England, I've not written a song that will top the charts. However, 
Understanding how they work just gives you a leg up.